Is that what you Most do? Because, because you're really upset with your child and you take away their computer, <laughs> but you give them a Raspberry Pi 4 with Windows 10. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin Stone, joined by Jordan Swang and um, Pedro waiting in line. Mateus, and you at home helping us form the fourth leg of the chair. Shout Realm Dynamic, joining us in Discord, Twitch, and IRC. And together we make Cocaine Voltron. Now, before we get started, we need to ask, what was that about, Jordan? What, what are you two trying cans. to... What, what, no, two cans. Two cans. I, I think two you're cans. flashing like codes, man. Are yes. You, are you the, the two cans. You're the Illuminati. No, no, no. no the, 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 co- the codes are what I'm blinking then, obviously. Damn it. Damn it. I knew it. <laughs> oh. Too late. You know someone's going to find you <laughs> blinking something really, really bad. <laughs> oh, you... Listen, I, 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 have, I have enough accidental hate crimes under my belt that I have no doubt that I just blinked something awful in Morse code. Uh, speaking of a bad idea, I was uh, publishing Pedro's. Uh, at, he played some Alex Kid, and I'm like, all right, I'll cut that up a little bit, put it on the YouTube, let people watch it, because Pedro's died 20-something times, and that entertained me a little bit. And when we were in the YouTube studio thing, YouTube said, hey, we have this new thing for you. It's called... Super tanks. Well, it's called super tanks, but I called it super tanks. So apparently, <laughs> you can use that to like put things on top of our videos or highlight comments or something. I'm sure you psychopaths will come up with something crazy for it. So I look forward to no one using it on this video on YouTube tomorrow. Oh, it's like it's like the community tab, right, on YouTube. That thing that no one uses. Hey, I don't it fully understand it, but it, there, there's a fair warning if anybody goes to our YouTube channel tomorrow. I'm like, what the hell is this nonsense? Because I'll be right there with you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, <laughs> outside of that, just playing with some stuff. I did release a new video uh, in the OBS Linux Basics. I'm trying to do this for people new to Linux. If you've been curious, how do I make my OBS virtual webcam work? You want to use that with Skype. You want to use that with Zoom. You want to use it with Jitsi. You know, you're playing games like uh, Jackbox is a good example where you want to have the board available to all the players. Now, the reason I get this question is because people don't know about V4L2 loopback, which is typically not going to be part of your default installation. And OBS doesn't have that button unless it detects that. So I'll show you how to get it installed, even on Arch. Because Pedro, I heard you had to use the sudo command. Uh, yes. <laughs> As oh, no. it turns out, Pac-Man needs sudo. <laughs> Even if people oh, don't shit. tell us about it. <laughs> it is a thing. Also, what you, you don't run everything as root? No, man. I, I, I got I got rid of Fedora. It's what Arch, not Puppy. <laughs> or uh, Kali Linux. Still digging the uh, Samsung Galaxy S6 Lite? Yeah, that thing. That That's a really dope tablet. I, I still don't have my, S, my Sven yet. So I'm sad. It's in the mail, though. The guy's going to ship it to me. But yeah, if anybody's looking for like a mid-range tablet that's reasonably like under 300 bucks, go for one. There you go. That's my full review. Um, hey. Thank you for attending my TED Talk. How about you, Jordan? Uh, I've been I've been busy all week. Yeah, my, my girlfriend broke two of her toes and has been bedridden because she can't really At the same really time help. or was it at like the, a... At, oh. the, at <clears throat> the same time. Wouldn't that suck if you broke one? Then <laughs> <laughs> you're like, hey, check this out. I got the good leg. I can hop her up. No, that's that's like the Ace Ventura shit where you get shot in the leg with the one arrow and then the other the other leg is like, ah, ah. yeah. So um, because, you know, normally she handled all the early morning dog walking, feeding stuff. Now I've been having to do all that. And oh, man, it's a lot of work for one person. Ugh, I'm not, especially when you're not a morning person. Aww. So uh, <laughs> I've, 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 I've been dealing with that blow to my sleep schedule. But you got a wheelchair. What, what, I, I do I do have I do have a rusty wheelchair that uh, is <laughs> that is less useful than you would hope. Unfortunately, then, then again, I'm still holding out um, hopes that it's haunted. I mean, if the house wasn't haunted from like the guy that got shot I here, just like, it might be might be an attack vector for grandma to come back and <laughs> double complete haunting. Return of the grandma. Oh no, mm, Grandma Geddon. What about you, Pedro? Anything new? Exciting? Uh, not particularly, uh, did get a, uh, notification from, um, the Pine Time shipping, uh, as soon as we were done with the Wednesday show, they sent me a text, it's like, oh, you're a package from 
someplace in China, uh, is um, booked to to be delivered with us. We'll send you uh, another text when the uh, the package is in the UK. So mm. in about another two weeks, I'll get that text, hopefully. I, I do know <laughs> that you have a little bit of a PSA that you can deliver to anyone on Virgin Internet in Britannia. I, there are several. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> yeah, Ex- no, they've the been obvious. dropping the ball recently. But yeah, no, the most recent one is if you have a hub 3.0 and you notice that uh, it went down without your say-so at some point, it probably did a firmware update. They pushed out one recently. And for me, uh, they disabled all of my port forwarding settings. Mm-hmm. They were still there. They weren't deleted. They were just disabled. So I had to enable the one for <laughs> Sonobus just before uh, I got on because I got on. It's like, I can't hear anything. This uh, did not help things because to complicate this <laughs> issue, Jordan couldn't hear me because of some hardware yes. not being plugged in. So I'm sitting here in the pre pre super shows and going, fuck. All right. This is going to be one of those nights, isn't it? But everything got sorted out. Fortunately, thank you. Thank you. I, I can only give thanks to the horse. The horse doesn't want your thanks. The horse wants your blood. It's all ooey and gooey, and it runs the Steam Deck. It's the Steam Analytics. The update. Oh, asterisk, 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 actually, because we, we, we have to put a bit of big old colliery on there, don't we, Pedro? Oh, man. <laughs> Several. Uh, yeah, that is... Um, well, everyone's now running rampant saying what the... Uh, Steam Deck can play and what it can't play, and uh, everyone seems to agree that anti-cheat is still the big no-no, but Valve is claiming that it hasn't found a game that uh, the Steam Deck can handle. And yes, the um, the big one here is it is running an AMD APU and has someone who did put together a Steam-specific Steam box running just the APU originally. Now it has a 1650 in it. Thank you very much, Artharin. Uh, but yeah, with just the 2400G, with Vega Graphics, it could play two years ago, everything at 720p, 30 FPS. And, and I mean, like, that, that's kind of that's <laughs> kind of the big asterisk here. If you look in the article, it's less, yeah. yes, they can't find a game that the Steam Deck can't run at 800p at 30 hertz. So, I <laughs> I, I mean, you're, you're not going to be, like, viewing the, the 1080p crisp, crispness on a 7-inch display, so running it at, like, a little resolution. 1080p Christmas. Is fine. 1080p Christmas. Yes. yes. I want that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, Valve, I know something because immediately when I read this, Kismet, I ran into this last night. Here's something that I can't run. Crisis 2007, <laughs> because I purchased a copy of that on Steam yesterday to play on the live stream. I'm like, hey, I've never played Crisis. It'll be fun. It'll be a good goof. Get it run, Crisis, Proton. And you cannot play that game on a modern operating system, be it Windows or Linux, because it's properly fucked. And, um, as I felt myself at the second sketchy Russian web zone, which everyone, the recommended sketchy one, like download this. So yeah, what are you going to do about stuff like that? How gonna- I, I mean, that, 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 that's shit that has to be like addressed on the Steam store, right? Like they need to actually have Crisis have like well, a binary update. Saying, or they just said they could run everything. Well, <laughs> I, maybe, maybe they have an activated version of Crisis that they but tested on. Do not but- deny me my will, actually. <laughs> there's a lot well, of things that you can already run you just have you know several steps that you need to go on proton db to find out for yourself what as, as someone <laughs> as someone though who was actually looking forward to having the dock and being able to like use it as a handheld and then like stick it into something and use it as like a tv box mm-hmm. prepare yourself for 1080p low just I Just think saying. that that's going to catch yeah. a lot of people I, th- I genuinely believe most people are going to be using it mobile they're mm-hmm. going to bother with sure. the dog, mm-hmm. but uh, expectations are going to be like lowered expectations. I yeah, really no. hope Valve is going to come out like at launch date and have something. I can't imagine how you do it, but to get games to default closer to that 720p lifestyle. And to, I think it, that's part it, of it, the maybe maybe, maybe you could send it. Yeah, and I mean, maybe you could send out some hardware to make sure that game devs nope. are able to do that. Uh, that would be uh, <laughs> crazy talk. Crazy, uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, SDKs, they're out there, and uh, you can play around. There's one who's like, hey, here's a little snark pick of the deck that they've sent out, and this means that some lucky developers 
All right, seriously, who uses new Reddit? That is the most, jeez. Um, <laughs> That's not great, no. Yeah, some lucky developers are going to have uh, one to play with for about four months before it launches. So get to work, lads. And um, Valve must really think things are just going to work with that like, lead time because you think uh, traditionally with a game console, even uh, you're going to get 18 months to play around with it, maybe dial something in, make, put some of that customization in there for the hardware itself. Nay, not with this. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I would, I would, I would be surprised. I would, I would be surprised if Valve hasn't sent out like test hardware already to like several partners. Um, we need more banana for scale though. Like, I, 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 w- I would really like to see what this looks like in comparison with a banana to have like a good sense of how big this is in my hand. That is probably as long as a banana. Yes. Uh. <laughs> Judging by Jesus. the size of the. Uh, Lottie da, Mr. Huge Banana. Bananas for days. <laughs> oh, here's what I, I wasn't really... talking about. My banana. <laughs> here's something. Here's something. Well, you still have to click. I was thinking about this last night when I was rolling through different ways, uh, getting crisis up and running. Do you still have to click OK when you try to install a Windows game? I hope not. I, I hope uh, at, at the very least there um, there's there's, pro- there's probably going to be like, hey, uh, a little thing like, hey, this is either Proton, at least in the UI. I think, though, if they're going to use a custom like storefront for the deck, that, that is what I would like to see, because effectively what we get on Linux is the equivalent of a warning message because it says warning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, you know, to be fair, to be fair for most people, that's probably a good thing, especially it, it's pre productized Jordan, but it doesn't jive when you're like, everything's going to fucking work. Something don't you have to yeah. worry about anything. Yeah. <laughs> which, which, which is and why that I'm warning does on... appear. That warning does appear in the current iteration of the, um, big picture, big mode. picture mode. Yeah. Yeah. You so still the, have to you, press. You're, you're, you're right. They, they, you, they do have to fix that. Uh, or at least like have a custom UI to bypass that. As, if there's it's like check. Oh, this is a steam deck. Okay. Yeah. No, mm. we're fine. Well, somebody I've had on the show, uh, not on this show, but we've had it on weekly daily Wednesdays. A person I've known for a long time. You might know him as Iggy Butts, Ryan Gordon. Uh, he had some thoughts last week. Ethan flippity, ibbity, jibbity by Bo shared his opinions about the stream deck and I'm um, good stream deck. You know what? I fucking make Gabe gear. And uh, yeah, Ryan, you mad. if you are unfamiliar, he effectively was the Linux gaming industry starting out um, with Loki games. And if you were playing a port in the 2000s, he probably did it. Yep. And uh, Jack Slater decided to have a bit of a conversation with him, ask him what he thought about it. And well, apparently he gets it. He gets why Valve did this and he gets the point of just, you know, clicking install and the game works and it solves the other issue which is you don't have to go down to the linux store to buy yourself a linux it is a dedicated device that already has steam os running on it so you don't have to sideload or install um steam os on your own pc or your own laptop it it's already there it's already running and you know <laughs> with the steam machines valve kind of poop the bed because they undercut everyone else when they released the um, the Steam Link and everyone was already kind of iffy on the whole situation and then Valve released that and they go, oh, okay. So that's, go- that's how it's gonna go. So now Valve is on their own and it's time to put the money where their deck is, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, so G- Gordon hits on a couple of the points that we were talking about last week, vis-a-vis like um, n- native is usually better when um, you you d- you don't want guesswork, right? Proton, it, we, we we've talked about it. Wine is a moving target. It has definitely stabilized a lot in the past couple of years, and I think Proton has done was it has been instrumental in facilitating that. But you know, if you actually want to have control over the build, if you want to have things that are predictable, then yeah, maybe you want a native port. Um, and va- right goes on about how this is this is contrary to what uh, Flibbit's opinion is uh mm-hmm. this is the time to be hustling more but here 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 here's my take on it i think good hustling might be able to sway like some of the smaller devs smaller studios to embrace a native port but like your triple a c level douchebags they're not going to give a shit they're like why why should we invest in a native port because why? you walk up to them in in your um like a uh, nice uh, long collared shirt and say hey let's do the hustle yeah, you 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 go you you go and you like open up your a- air squareola pouch yeah. and you pull from it a giant wad of cash and then you hand it over to that's Bobby Cotton. That's exactly how you do the hustle. <laughs> now, I hey Gordon, 
Igibots, he gets the idea. You know, it, I said this last week. If the Game Gear hits big, it hits hard. Um, people are going to start looking into those native ports in order to squeeze out that last little bit of performance. And uh, that's just such a big honking if, though. Because if it we're is. being honest, like it's selling good, that's kind of the second hurdle, man. Because the first one is, you know, banking in Game Gear, not banking, but banking in Game Gear optimized default for the hardware. That, that, that's that got to be there from the developer on their end. And I don't know if we're going to see that outside of, because I am sure AAA titles, anybody who's going to be targeting them, is like, hey, make sure the default settings for this game is like, if game, Game Gear uh, set this, you know, set I th- I th- run. I th- I think there's also a, a domain knowledge issue as well because you know uh, a lot a lot of um, a, a lot of Linux engineering happens either behind the scenes via like uh, Unity providing an export button or Valve providing Proton as a layer to actually run the things. So um, I, I think I think that that expertise required to like produce highly optimized native ports. We've seen Feral struggle with it, and they were the guys who were like at the forefront of this. Making mm-hmm. high performance uh, AAA, well, high performance quote unquote company heroes <laughs> to, uh, but you know, yeah, you know, no, and I, the, what 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 the, the the point is like, um, sque- getting that native port um, or the the proposition of a nav- native port becomes a lot less attractive when those performance gains are kind of minimal and they're really hard fought to get to begin with. And uh, Achilles makes a very good point. It's like the the very last question. Uh, the optimistic view is that obviously Valve couldn't wave a magic wand and make everyone ship Linux games no matter how much we wanted it to work that way. And that kind of spells out the whole thing. Even Valve couldn't get people to actually do the ports properly or at all in a lot of cases. And yeah, we had um, Feral and earlier on we had Aspire and there were a couple others. It's it's always it's always been that chicken and egg situation where like oh we're not going to port games to Linux because there's no audience well there's no audience because you don't port games so this is but this it's is where we're at mo- Valve's <laughs> interest is what's going to require the least amount of effort for us to make the most amount of money turns out that's exactly. Proton Proton exactly. yeah <laughs> and I mean you know with Proton you get some neat stuff uh, this this next stuff is uh, from WCCF Tech uh, so uh, Eggy Eggy has been working behind the scenes to uh, implement AMD uh, fractional scaling resolution we talked about it this is the open source AMD equivalent to your DLSS uh, and uh, they have uh, integrated this into the Proton full screen hack which is pretty neat because now you can add FSR to almost any application there's a couple caveats though it only works in Vulkan games um what what was it? Um, only works in Vulcan games. Some games do their own upscaling, so games like that, g- games that do that, won't uh, this won't function on. Uh, this should not actually be applied at the layer of the Proton full screen hack. So it's actually mm-hmm. going to be it's pretty hacky. It's not going to be perfect, but um, Eggy was saying he's able to squeeze um, an extra. F- uh, what twenty five FERPs at UHD at uh, on the new Forza game, and he likes to, he, he put a little uh, gloaty tweet uh, er, out earlier. So it's, it's always <laughs> fun bit. when <laughs> he, he's just like straight <laughs> up. He's like, I'm the cable company, by the way. Yeah, yeah, the joy I get from answering this is <laughs> unending. And yeah, questions: Could I use FSO like this on my games and Windows? Answer: No. This is for Linux only. Oh, so mm, 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 naughty. <laughs> so good. But yeah, oh. I, I very much look forward to the Proton GE release where this uh, becomes a thing. Uh, if you want to try it right now, YNTKG has a version that does this. But yeah, the, the big the drawback here is that it's being applied at the topmost layer, not like how a game would actually do What's it. Your problem? Just you don't do want your it. menu to be crisp? <laughs> <laughs> the problem is the way that it scales, it's probably going to assume that the menu is a part of the game and it's going to blend everything together. So it might make things weird. Don't worry. I'll or just, difficult to I'll read. Just enable the DLSS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, the, the thing with that's the big advantage over DLSS is that FSR is open source and open source. I, 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 give it I was going to gonna say. This this is one of the few advantages over doing a native port is that like hey you can ingest this new technology uh, whether you like it or not mm-hmm. because the thing that's running your game is open source even if the game itself isn't mm-hmm. interesting <laughs> top of, top, top of the June to you top of the releases 
Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> There's always uh, Valve ever since uh, the Epic Store started doing the whole, oh yeah, we have less games, so it's easier for developers to get recognition on our store and whatnot. <laughs> Valve went, all right, fine, you want recognition? I was the excited games that right do at the, the beginning because a couple of the Linux titles are right at top. Then I read this list is sorted randomly. Yes. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> they are deliberately saying this is not a ranking thing. Uh, this is these are just the however many games um, we found to be selling the best over the month of June, and uh, yeah, the the there were two of them that we actually threw chairs at, uh, Wilder Myth and Griftlands, and they do deserve all the awards that they can get because Jordan, Griftlands, you if you like deck building games, Pulsar. have you uh, given that any more thought? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I was, I was actually going to say like, maybe, I think, uh, maybe Thursday if we can get some people uh, together. Cause I know some folks, in, I want to uh, do Shad dark alliance. I want to get together and like fuck around with that, but not at that price, not with the reviews no. of that price. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, for, for, for dark alliance, I'm really hoping there's going to be some post-release patches that fix some stuff. I, I'm hoping it goes for like 10 bucks and I'll get us yeah. some copies. Oh so yeah. Yeah. Of, of course. Yeah. Or, or it's in a humble bundle. Uh, also, I just want to bring this up. It's not Linux, but uh rogue book is on that list. It's a deck building roguelike. Uh, game with design from Richard Garfield. So I just want to wish him luck and hope they do better than the other <laughs> Richard Garfield game on uh, on uh, Steam Artifacts. Oh. So uh, that went well. <laughs> so, you know, be, be, best of luck, guys. Have uh, they just, officially killed Artifact? Or? No, oh, no, no. They're, they're, they're just moving 100% to like the Artifact 2 free to play model. Oh, okay, they're just, okay. They're, mm-hmm. they're just, I mean, I, I assume they're just going to keep it running until the servers it's running on break, and then they're going to retire it. Oh, so you mean like what was it Thursday? Did us? <laughs> that it's, no, yeah, gotta, do, do I need to point to the haiku? Do I need to point to the haiku? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk about a couple of new games that have come to Linux this week, and this one gets a mention. Ninety nine percent of the reason it gets a mention because of its name. I am talking about <laughs> Raptor Boyfriend. A high school romance. Uh, yeah. Teen girl moves to a small secret community of cryptids. Uh, that's a word. Romance, magical fairies, sensitive Sasquatches. Jordan's a fan of that. And oh, satirical yeah. 90s teen drama about trying to find love in your last year of high school. I don't want to wait for my raptor to be <laughs> over. It, it, it's, it's Zoe from Left 4 Dead. The main character looks exactly like Zoe from Left 4 Dead. <laughs> Uh, it's like the origin reactor. story. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I think you might be mistaking her from like one of, for one of the Life is Strange characters, but uh, Robert the Raptor. Be... Yes, and it, it's no. like reasonably animated too. I mean, work it went into this. Oh yeah, I, I, absolutely. There a lot a lot of these like dating sims have an obscene amount of work put into them because they're all you, no pun intended labors of love. Uh, I didn't but, know yeah. they had antenna. These ones do apparently. Clearly, huh. it depends on the source material. Yeah, wait, I, I, I misread that. I saw choose which skulls to crush, and if you know. can crush skulls in this rating in this dating game, then uh, I, I'm just saying if I if I see that we got Faye in there, could we get like the Morrigan to show up? Yeah, or or or, or, or the seed hay. We'll start wailing, and then you die. What's this going to sell us back? Thirteen ninety nine. I'm just. I'll probably never buy this. I'll never play it. But I say just a on the name alone. B. Looking at the trailer, that's worth thirteen ninety nine. What's this take to run under Linux? Uh, Less seller on yeah, some celery, man. Two gigajoules of RAM and Rocket Adrift Games twenty twenty. Excellent, excellent um, choice of material for to make your dating sim stand out from the others. <laughs> I, I think I think it needs more reviews in Russian, though. Yes, clearly. Oh yes, much like the uh, this game, Tyrion. Uh, I thought it was um, Tyrion. Tyrion. We're, we're Tyron, or man. Tyron? <laughs> I'm tiring of this yeah. conversation. Tyron, Tyron, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a combination of tactical elements from familiar strategic genres. Translation, uh, we just ripped off a bunch of mechanics we thought were interesting and tried to build a game on it. It mostly ended up kind of like Warcraft 3, but apparently it didn't do too well. Because according to the reviews, uh, the developer went a couple of years without pushing out an update for it. And then they just said, you know what? Fuck it. This is now complete. It is done. And yeah, the last review that I found was from January in Russian and running it through Google Translate. uh, Dude says it's a MOBA. It controls terribly. The enemies don't have any like wall detection. So they just 
clipped through walls all the time. Uh, and yeah, it's not uh, it's not very good. It, it it's yeah, not. You got to take absurdly. out the your language filter. Uh, yes, <laughs> I because can read this. It, it, <laughs> there are quite a few of the um, of the reviews that specifically say the game hasn't been developed. Re- receive, re- received forever. for free. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the, the 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 Russian review also received a free copy, and they were pretty scathing. I will I mm-hmm. will say if I if I gotta find one little silver lining on this shitty shitty cloud, good on them for including online multiplayer in their MOBA game on Linux. I mean, it's a shame it's, it's it's dead, it's but they're dead. Five ninety nine, and the sample size from the Steam reviews that are counted are thirty. So. Yeah, yep. Steam, Steam charts, it's like at point zero one players in the past 30 days, so... And it could very well be what Pedro said. They just said, you know, because this just showed up this week in the new releases segment. They're like, hey, it's done now, by the way. And unfortunately, we've ran into a couple of games over the years, over the decade, over the 10-year day um, that have done that. So, Oh, uh, Space Base DF9 or DS9 or whatever it was that just magically appeared in our inventories all of a sudden. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah th- thanks, Tim, I guess. <laughs> thanks, Chef Man. Isn't it going to be weird getting review copies from Microsoft? <laughs> no. Uh, okay. It's, I'm going to have some weird feels when, I mean, it's still going to be our brothers and sisters at Humble, but also Microsoft. Also Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, you, you can always uh, upload your manifesto to GitHub yep. and publish it there. Yeah. Uh, Creator Crate. Uh, yeah, Creator Crate. Uh, it's that game that, uh, no, the other other one. Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> what was it? Uh, Vector. 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 Yeah, we, we've talked about Vector before. The last time we discussed Vector, um, the developer was leaving. Uh, the game had basically reached feature completion. And uh, the dude said, you know what? I want to get some of my free time back. Uh, it's no longer being fun. Uh, I'm gone. And three months later, uh, he's bored. Apparently he misses, he misses his little fuck around project. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so now he's saying, uh, he's going to focus more on development. He's not going to be doing feature requests. He's not gonna be doing discord PR. Um, this is, it's very much a hobby thing for him. Um, so yeah, if you were, if you really liked vector and you were hoping for continued development and patches and bug fixes, then, I mean, you might get them eventually. Uh, so yeah. w- w- what I'm hearing is um, kind of hit them up with some uh, feature ideas and suggestions, right? <laughs> ma- oh, ma- yeah, maybe. he really wants those. He wants those real bad. Yeah. <laughs> and in, in case you forgot, uh, Vector is free to play, so you can just download it and play it. It's and, a, it's a, a music-based uh, game where you have to dodge obstacles. and Yeah. It's they- Vaporwave, man. It's neon as shit. Uh, it looks and I think like three months the is 80s. a good time. Uh, three months is a good amount of time to like clear your head and just okay. Now I'm gonna go do literally anything else, and then you start going. Okay, I have some ideas of my own, which would also explain the whole. I'm not taking feedback. Just, mm. I'm gonna do my thing. <laughs> Fair enough. Now something. Uh, we we got sent copies of this at some point, didn't we? I yes. Think we have. I, there, there, was, there was a demo. I played the demo a little mm. bit. Um, so we, 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 we had talked about it. It's that, um, it's that puzzle platformer that uh, has the uh, that has like the accurate gravity. So like the closer you get to the center of the circular level, like the the worse your jumps are, and the further away, the longer your jumps are. That sort of thing. Um, it's out. Uh, it's going to be out on August 11th. So if you uh, want to check that out. Uh, you can. There is a demo, so if you want to see if it uh, is your jam, you can also <laughs> oh. play around with it. It it takes you through the uh, tutorial. So, okay. yeah, yeah. Give that give that a mention. Yeah, it, well, this looks like it's going to be a proper 1.0. What's this thing going to run us, man? Uh, deadly action. There is a demo. No price yet. No, no, oh, no, no, no price yet. <laughs> okay, well, do we know what we need to run it? Ubuntu 1804. Okay, so you need a retro gaming system, and uh, yeah. Also tested yeah. on Manjaro, so <laughs> there you go. It's running with SteamOS 3.0. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, coming up next, NVIDIA releases a driver and then releases another one because it's full of horrible, horrible security <laughs> vulnerabilities. Jeez, bitches.
And here Oi. I am trying to shoo Oi. away a fly and Oi. then kicks to me. Muppet. Perfect timing. <laughs> it's like Swan Lake. Yes. No, that... There's a stupid fly flying around me. How I do don't you know, know why dare, this how, is news, but it is news it now. Could be see, a there you radically go. intelligent, <laughs> super smart fly. It could uh, be Jeff clearly Goldblum. it wants to be on camera. Whatever yeah. it is, it's Je- yeah. So it's Jeff Goldblum. He always wants to be on camera. <laughs> you're, you're, I love you. You could Independence be our Day. Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> how can you deny the brindle fly? <laughs> I don't. Uh, I, I don't know. But if you if you would like to hack into our alien spaceship with your Macintosh computer, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Maybe it's become the best a patron. Fly. It's the it's the best Will Smith movie you'll ever see this year. Um, I don't know. No, no eject button. Yeah, become a Patreon. You get some cool benefits like access to the uh, to the Discord channel. Um, if you're an executive producer or hire, you get access to the pre pre super shows and the live video feed, which is pretty good. You get to hear us talk about Knight Rider and He Man and shit. We got some oh. other stuff too. Um, and animation, animation. Oh, and we found the perfect car for Pedro. We did. We found, but that's that's a yeah. big spoiler though. Yeah. That's a very <laughs> big a spoiler. Big spoiler. <laughs> So, <laughs> so you you, you got to go watch that yourself. Um, yeah, if you're a Patreon as well, you also get access at specific levels to the show notes. So you can see the show come together throughout the week, make suggestions, issue corrections, just make fun of us in Google Docs. It's good fun. And you can even buy your way on the goddamn show. We have a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. You can go buy Linux Gamecast merch, clothe yourself in it, and then step into a teleporter and then give a fly horrible fly mutant monster some lgc merch and then you've doubled your advertising budget with a single purchase it just makes financial sense clearly we, we're clearly. juggernauts of industry dude that that's awesome and if you get some merch send me a picture we'll put it up on the show uh another thing we want to mention hop in our discord if you are a patron or if you sub to us on twitch because that's where we're at the other six days a week talking and it's uh reasonably Show place except when it's not weird things go on there but we also have irc available for anyone pop in that's bridge to our discord bridge to our twitch chat just not right now because i think uh Strader's messing around with the bot but um i uh, know that's the uh that's spots. the other bot One that's the, the other bot the, i don't know the, the, I, listen i'm not the, the bridge is self-contained I, I whatever uh the bifrost i don't know dude i just got well actually laid over that so i i uh, know where to go <laughs> but up here um Hey, hey, I, I, I had to spend the, uh, the... There we go. And um, check this out. If you like this, this is the middle part. We got a special bonus thing. If you need four hours of this for whatever bizarre twisted reason, it is available in podcast form. You get the show a little bit early on Saturday, uh, Sundays, not on Saturdays. We need time travel. And we're banned from that. But uh, check out Discord in the announcement segment. There's also a video of me stumbling around in crisis for the first time. Don't watch it. We, we got we got some we got some new patreons we got to thank too. How many? We got to thank. Uh, we, we got two. We got we got to thank Alex and we got to thank Zin Zin Zin. You can send us some hate mail and tell us how to actually pronounce your name. Uh, Alex is yeah. just a general natural badass, but Pedro, you got to tell me an interesting fact about Zine. Something that no one uh, knows except possibly his grandmother or her grandmother. <laughs> Their grandmother. Well, we were uh talking about zinc earlier, so I think Zine uh is uh a very What's the, the the word I'm looking for here as someone who can tell the future? Skeletor? Grandmothery? Prescient? Haunted. <laughs> <laughs> or though we can say yeah no Zion is Skeletor there we go that, uh, that's a far uh, more no, interesting it's, it's, fact. at the very least his grandmother is Skeletor hey yes there we go <laughs> all right uh, beautiful people let's get into as is tradition at the beginning of the news top of the story top of the morning and top of the drivers new drivers <laughs> yeah new drivers well a couple of sets of new drivers uh, it was uh, 470.42.01 but now uh, it's 470.57.02 there were uh, there were some problems uh, but this is a big chunky update though uh, this is the non-beta so it's there's going to be a bunch of features added in like they added the um, they had stuff for prime displays on AMD GPUs uh, or prime display offloading on AMD GPUs as well as other NVIDIA GPUs. So if you want to, ha- if you have like a 730 and a 1080 or something and you want to have the 1080 just drive video or drive the graphical processing, you can do that. I don't know why you'd want to, but you absolutely can. Um, what else? Uh, they have some x Wayland fixes as well. Uh, some new Vulkan extensions to be added. Uh, some crashes. 
Uh, again, a lot, a lot of these fixes were just in other beta releases. Uh, but then they added a brand new system, a brand new thing, NVIDIA NGX. What's that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so check it out, man. Uh, on top of that, there's some X-Wayland fixes. So they work it on this, man. There was issues with like Blender blinking and all that fun stuff. But yeah, NGX build, that is going to be for use with like Proton, Wine, all that fun stuff. And they put a new livery in there, the NVNGX DLL. That's been added to enable the driver side support for running Windows applications, which make use. You might have guessed it. DLSS still waiting on Red Dead Redemption to work. And I'm not downloading that damn thing and keeping it until it does. Uh, but, but one thing, the changes to Proton, like Wine and other third party software are going to be needed for that feature. So this is not just like, oh, now it's just super. Yeah. Enabled. Yeah, because the, the, the whole NGX thing is all the AI processing stuff that uh, RTX opens up or the, the Tensor Cores opens up. So I, I would imagine that these changes probably have something to do with the fact that everything is being advertised in Wine and Proton Land as a Radeon card. And maybe there's some code paths there that uh, don't get triggered because you're not using the right I driver. Don't, hey, man, Amazon found a way to trigger some 3090 code paths <laughs> and EVGA cards. <laughs> I, I, I mean, is is that Amazon's fault or is that NVIDIA's fault? Oh, I think that would be EVGA's fault. <laughs> yeah, it's the hardware partner's fault, apparently, because it d didn't seem to be with the uh, Founders Editions cards. It seemed to be with the hardware. I suggest ones. everyone go look yeah. this up because we have a real modern day halt and catch fire. Yes. yes. <laughs> a real thing. Odd. Uh, any of you guys uh, install it? I did this uh, this morning. Seems install to what? Done. This driver? The, yeah, this driver. Yeah. yeah. That's one does. Yeah, work. I, I installed it the day it came out. <laughs> okay. Like a boss. 19th? No. Yeah. It, it drivers Did, did your 1080 catch fire? No. no. I don't no. have one. Then again, I don't play that Amazon game because it has a, um, easy anti-cheat. Hey. So, shame. can't play it. Saved. <laughs> See, look, now you found a use for EAC. Uh, this is not the only <laughs> NVIDIA news because you know us. We are NVIDIA shills. We can't get enough of it. But I did want to give this a mention because um, NVIDIA showed off uh, DLSS, ray tracing, all the fun stuff, working on ARM. And this could be kind of an interesting thing for Chromebooks and the like. Wouldn't you kind of agree? Because, uh, oh, and it was running Arch on top of everything else. So, yes. yeah, this is Wolfenstein Youngblood RTX is on, man. This was at GDC 2021. They just came out and did this. They're like, hey, there it is. We don't need Proton. We can do this natively. And uh, no, you cannot has because, haha, we're and then, you know, Jensen like put his, twiddled his mustache and ran out with cake. <laughs> something, something Bethesda. Yeah. Can, can he even grow a mustache? <laughs> he probably can. But, I mean, it's pretty neat that we do have a native port of Youngblood, uh, I guess, for a Heart 64. And I, 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 I originally asked, hey, are we ever going to see this? Is this just internal only? And according to the video, if you listen to the lady narrator, she's like, there's no plans to commercially release this. I'm like, ah, I see how this goes. <laughs> oh, mm. I guess it, the only so, uh, saving so, grace there would have been, you know, Microsoft loves Linux and now Microsoft owns Bethesda. So maybe... Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. This this is just very interesting for Chrome OS and Chromebook. I'm arm powered laptop because th this is in our future. Ten years from now, if you're buying a laptop, it's not going to be x86. It's probably going to do some x86 emulation, but it's going to be some psychotic Risk Five arm, big little nutcracker, and uh, yeah. probably arm because uh, Risk V would not make for a very how dare you say laptop? anything accurate about the current state of Risk V? Yeah. <laughs> shut up, shut up, Mr. Foxdog. Jeez. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Just to blindly oh, champion things and not question. Um, okay. So that's that's all we get for RTX OS. Uh, more easy game oh. tools because, hey, man, it's got our favorite uh, install method. Whoa. What? I, I mean, we, we, we did have that. Uh, we did that have that have that whole other story about the, the Chromebook uh, <laughs> RTX thing that's happening. That's I what I was just it's the specific through. one about Chromebooks. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I, I can absolutely see the this would make arm Chromebooks. OK. Instead of being the laughing stock like they are now actually make them very, very interesting devices because all of a sudden, oh, you have arm that's running a full on NVIDIA GPU. 
like they showed with the 3060 in that uh, yeah, Youngblood spe- thing. Spe- Speaking of, uh, I took I took a look at that because they're running on the new uh, MediaTek SoC, the MT eight one nine five, and that one's actually kind of interesting because it does a uh, a bigger big little architecture because they got a single core at three gigahertz, uh, three more cores at uh, two point five, and then another and then another four at uh, two for like the low power stuff. Uh, so I mean. We're, we're, we're seeing we're seeing some of these uh, these uh, these ARM uh, CPU vendors come out with some pretty impressive things. Uh, this SOC is specifically targeted at like phones and tablets. I would have liked to see any media tech come up and like, yeah, we got a we got an M1 competitor, or at least something that can compete in that range. It, but 100 percent. NVIDIA is 100 percent work. I mean, they already have the Tegra, but there's going to be yeah. a successor to that. And I'm pretty sure they're going to be we're first going to see that in data center. But. They're, they're going to have some, but then again, Apple, Apple's going to have something to best the M1 and make it look like a Tonka toy, probably mm-hmm. before the end of this year. Oh, probably, yeah. They, yeah. they, they, they got the, they got the bigger <laughs> version of that. They got the M2. That's, that's what I'm saying. Imagine what they can do when they use things like cooling. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because the, the, that the, both the iPad and the uh, the MacBook Pro were all passively cooled, so. If you crack up that power, it's it's going to be impressive. I, I guess. I guess well, do, you, do you think we're going to stick with um, traditionally like ARM SOCs? It have been really small. No, I want to see like big honking 360 rads water cooling systems. Well, yeah. PCs. Yeah. I, th- I, I think we all want that 128 core <laughs> desktop part, right? Like, yeah, that's... But I want it to be tiny so I can have like a water yeah. block on it. And it's, yeah. <laughs> A little, <laughs> probably scaling it up to the size of a typical Intel or AMD current gen processor would make you know cooling compatibility a heck of a lot easier. For sure, <laughs> um, I, I guess. I guess though, this kind of confirms the theory that, or my theory that um, we're going to start seeing some like beefier Chromebooks coming out to take advantage of uh, some of the better hardware that's available. Once they get that beefy, uh, what what's the advantage of running Chrome OS on them at that point? Instead of I mean, you're just, not not running Windows. That's basically it. But you know, Windows when when Windows was going to run, it currently runs on ARM. Uh, yeah, the not, way not that very, cr- not very well. Chromebooks are done, it's not the easiest to load a different operating system entirely on them. Is that what you Mostly do? Like, if you're really upset with your child and you take away their <laughs> computer, but you give them a Raspberry Pi four with Windows ten. I, isn't that against the Geneva Convention? <laughs> it's probably very, very close to like child that is abuse. Close to abuse yeah. Yes, I don't yeah. know how to get away with that. <laughs> I was just curious. Now, can we talk about Pedro's favorite install method? Yeah, sure. Uh, no, it really isn't. But uh, people keep using it, and uh, the developers of uh, Micro Studio, specifically PMGL here and uh, Phoenix B3. Uh, they decided, you know what, let's, uh, let's create a game engine, a game engine that's online and it's a good platform to learn and practice programming. Although they didn't call it practice. They called it practice. Uh, the They're French, Pedro, uh, how dare you? <laughs> practice. <laughs> the practice. Uh, and, um, yeah, it is, uh, you can basically set it up yourself. You could do it locally or you could do it online. However, uh, the way to do it is uh, step one, install Node.js, and you lost me. So, no, I mean, come so, on. <laughs> so, some of us aren't afraid of desktop JavaScript and can run <laughs> npm run start. Um, Everyone can well, run npm I mean, run. What I don't want to I, deal is the bullshit amount of dependencies no, that requires no, to install a no. game engine. <laughs> but I mean, there was that great uh, <laughs> atrocious security issue with npm uh, that like today or yesterday again i mean I, I, I lost count, you're, you're gonna have to be more specific yeah like, right yeah. See, there's the problem with <laughs> there's NPM. been a few yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for that day uh yeah but I yeah i really want people someone go out make a game with um micro studio here and uh send me a link so i could play it very much looking forward to it i do hope that people uh get to create something amazing with this just uh don't ask me to install npm well, that, you don't have to because no. it, it will run in a browser and they do have a publicly hosted version of this, this that you true. can dick around with. Yeah, and you can do the modification I, I, in I real time around. and all the fun stuff. And yeah. Yeah. I, 
I, I could play around with it. I mean, th- this would be great, you know, especially considering that your kids running windows did on a Raspberry Pi 4. They're kind of limited. Um, yeah, this is the only thing they can do. <laughs> Actually, no. Tr- trying to run a Node app, those are all single-threaded, man. Your mm. Pi 4 can't handle it. Mm. It'll teach them efficiency. Look at it that way. So <laughs> <laughs> you're Maybe JavaScript's the wrong language. Then. No, it's not. It's the future. We can do it in Python. No. Never mind. Uh, something that... <laughs> happened was like the dmca apocalypse at twitch early was this year right earlier this year yeah and a bunch of people got a bunch of copyright strikes and twitch said hey you better delete that and a bunch of people went hey which videos and twitch went how the fuck should we know then just finally <laughs> just delete up. all of them yeah the recommendation <laughs> just delete all of your vods from 10 years and uh no you can't get them back and twitch came out later to clarify hey yeah, uh, the reason we didn't have anything like this in place is because we never had to before. And we thought it was just going to be cool, right? You know, hey, you're not going to come after anything. Well, that happened. And um, so they've been getting around to adding some tools for streamers. And this is the latest update. So this is a list of uh, a new updated copyright fact. Uh, what's on the roadmap, product updates, and... Uh, what can we expect? Well, this and 2021 uh, select batches. Oh, so you can select your VODs to unpublish? Nice. And um, all VODs to delete. Yep, get notified about DMCA notifications on Twitch. Now, look at that. That's, Go figure. <laughs> that, that's, hey. that's real progress, kids. Um, <laughs> no, can, no, 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 no. Yeah, after they got shouted at by everyone after the how they completely mishandled it last time. Yeah, it's good. It's good to see, you know, it's being able steps, to see man. which specific video you uh, infringed copyright willingly well, the, or unwillingly. That's <laughs> not there yet, though. So uh, they, they, they did publish. A, they, they sent out an email alongside that link to this. Um, but their, their roadmap is right now you just get a dedicated DMCA section so you can click on a. Pan, uh, an icon in the Twitch panel, and it'll say, "Hey, here's all your uh, here's all your DMCA stuff." Um, at the end of the month, you'll be able to change it so that your vods don't publish by default, so that the onus can be on you to remove all of that copyrighted content. And then, even further in the future, your your <laughs> dashboard will actually just tell you which of your videos have actually just been claimed. <gasps> um, I know, I know. Uh, there's uh, appara- apparently the uh, counterclaim right from the Twitch dashboard is one of the next features that's coming, but. Uh, like to, to Ven's point, like your product team should have seen this coming, Twitch. They no <laughs> one didn't see this coming. They just had to get away with it, and um, streamers were the ones that fell victim of that. But you need these tools because not once, but twice, some motherfuckers tried to do a spurious copyright claim to some videos of us over Jackbox. The first time they didn't learn, I contacted Jackbox's legal. F- people they're like yo this is illegitimate da 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 and i was like thank you for that email response uh copyright person Forward. from jackbox right and just put that i had to go through the counterclaim notice like the next step was we're going to court so i'm like all right fuck it i need a hobby um so they removed that then they came back like less than two weeks later to hit another jackbox claiming that the jackbox music which is all made in-house was theirs and they wanted to taste that currently under twitch you don't get that information. You just get a shrug emoji. Somebody's coming after your shit, son. You better just delete all your stuff. So having at least the ability to identify, which gives you the information to say, hey, this is bullshit. As I guarantee you, and right it, now, if, right now it's open season on Twitch. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers filing this stuff, just seeing what they can get. Maybe not because there's no yeah, way to compensate, but it is required yeah, it's, it's, if you're filing a DMCA claim you have to specify which bits are infringing. We had this discussion with GitHub and how they completely mishandled the taking down of RE3, but uh, that's another story. So yeah, Twitch knows exactly if the DMCA claims are legitimate, which VODs at which point where, at least the freaking URL for the thing. And they're just not passing it along. And the biggest issue right now, even if you get the VOD <laughs> itself, we're, we're talking about the average person who does the Twitch thing. You're, you're talking like eight hour streams. So you it's, need it's, to know it's quite, where it's quite a bit in the VOD. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And like having having like specific UI tools for dealing with this as opposed to getting an email that says like, here are the timestamps. Mm -hmm. Go figure it out yourself. We do have the it's option kinda... in um, when I log into our uh, Twitch page and it, it'll we have a little thing on the right. It says you have a grand total of zero, which is good. Now, the ultimate moral of the story, you didn't make it. Don't fucking stream it. It. Nope. That that's just how it works. Um, yeah. Baby steps. I mean, good on Twitch for heading in the right direction. It just, it's like five years too late. Um, so it's hard to <laughs> mm -hmm. get the pat on the back for this one. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I mean, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> finish, finish the job you're doing. All right. Well, coming up next, I see red and it hurts my head. It's time for the check wizard. Welcome back to the Cherquisition. This week we're taking a look at Star Picker by Median Games. Median Games? E something. Done on the Unity engine, you can pick it up for about 20 bucks. What is it? Landing on mysterious planets, you have to quickly identify your location and find the best way to collect lost stars. Show your agility and strategy skills to complete your mission. Uh, so we gotta thank uh, Endemian Games for sending us some keys. So uh, I guess let's get into it. Ven. Oh yeah. What color What colors are you seeing? Uh, one in particular, Jordan. One in particular. Now, I, I ran this on what I like to call, man, it better fucking run because I'm running Debian. Now, admittedly, I am running Debian Bullseye, which is 11.0-ish, but that's about to be released completely. So, yeah, 1920X Threadripper, 32 gigs of RAM, 2060, NVIDIA, closed source, binary, big evil drivers that work with everything. And um, it launches. I was like, hey, man, the game looks all right. Looks decent. And... Uh, Kind of expected it to launch, which it did on the correct monitor. Then I thought, hey, you know what? I want to put this in a different resolution. And it went into a different resolution on the wrong fucking monitor. It jumped monitors. It skipped my middle monitor. Uh, then when it comes to running, Jordan, you will agree that startup time is brutal. Oh my, yeah, it, it doesn't matter how you try to run that fucking game. You will be, you have time to get up and get something. You like, can go make yourself get a, snack. a drink. And what's it doing? Oh, is it really taxing that Threadripper, Vin? No, it's doing fuck all. It's just sitting there spinning wheels. Then eventually it launches. Now, you finally get past that intro. You wait and you go through the dialogue. And what happens? You get a red screen. You get a red screen. It just goes to a red screen. That's it. Hey, you can hit escape. You can go back to the menu. Try to play the game again. Just red screen. Uh, that's as far as you can go. It, it really sucks. I have genuinely 100% uh, serious doubts that you lot tested this game on Linux before shipping it. Um, feel free to prove me wrong. I will personally take the Pepsi challenge. If you can tell me what hardware that you QA'd this game on, uh, I'm sure between the three of us and our audience, we can stick together a match and uh, replicate it. So, yeah. Call me on that. Um, let's just talk about the fun, though. I have 24 minutes in the game. All that time was spent waiting for it to start. Again, not getting two to three minutes sometimes to start up. And various ways to get around the red screen of Nope, which uh, was a constant thing. And I did not find either of those activities to be enjoyable. You might say, Proton, I was too pissed off trying to get this thing to work to even bother with Proton on this one. Plus, it's a native Linux game. It's got Linux. It's got the Steam icon. It's got system requirements. Every, every single thing that you would think uh, would indicate you might have tested it before taking people's money. I'm going to say, uh, yeah, run far away. One chair. <laughs> Yeah, on uh, Fedora 34, 64-bit. So uh, I had a little, I had a similar adventure to Ven uh, on the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. You get the, you try to get into the game, you get the red screen of dead. Um, and okay, for me, I if you had a keyboard and mouse plugged in, your uh, menu might flip out. It didn't happen all the time, but it did happen some of the time. So I thought maybe this, uh, maybe this red issue was caused because they tested it on like Mesa. Maybe they used an AMD box. So I went upstairs to the TV uh, that has the Venzel 8150 with the RX 580 in it. I installed the game, fired it up, still busted. So you got to play this on Proton. Uh, and in Proton, uh, your co keyboard controls are a little busted because the W in WASD does not work. So I ended up playing it on the DualShock 4. Which I forgot about that. Yes, the keyboard controls do not work either. No, they uh, do not. No, the keyboard uh, controls are stupid. 
stupid. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the, the, the visuals are very bare bones, but you know what? That's actually probably a benefit for this game because it's based on navigation. So having like very simplified features and like having things be easily identifiable probably helps with your core gameplay. So I can forgive the uh, less than detailed graphics. I'm not going to lie. The soundtrack is actually pretty bumping. Uh, so you, you get that. Fun wise. This is yeah, what this, we're this talking about. Pity. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Is the red screen of yes. no. Okay. <laughs> the red screen of dead. Uh, so fun wise. All right, this is basically a pity fuck, right? Because this is Linux game cast, and your native game doesn't run as advertised. So most of the fun I get to have is in regards to that. But I will I will speak a bit of the game play. Um, it's okay. You have a map. You have some MacGuffins. Find the MacGuffins quickly. Uh, you got to dash, run, vault, and duck. Sometimes, when you have the stamina. Your stamina runs out really, really slowly, or really, really quickly. Uh, so you got to make sure that you don't pile into a wall. Um, if you're going through the, if you're watching the video version, you can see these forests. It's a lot of ducking and vaulting and whatnot. Again, when you have the stamina to duck and vault. Um, eventually, you get a brand new nanny bar, which is your radiation shield that refreshes every time you find MacGuffin. So now you got to go extra fast. Is it fun? <laughs> Long time viewers, especially if you watched our uh, Borderlands playthrough, know that I am not great with maps. Um, the difficulty curve is pretty steady, though. And honestly, I'd rather have some friends along. But, you know, that's what Sea of Thieves is for. So I'm going to give this one share. Yeah, no, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080, uh, that is the footage that you're currently looking at, and to you, Strider, asking why I'm using DXVK to play this game, uh, that looks odd, I swear it <laughs> didn't look like that on my end, but yeah, the, um, the reason is because it doesn't work, <laughs> uh, it, when you first start it with the native Linux version, it starts on the wrong monitor. Uh, you want to set a specific resolution that's um, larger than 1080p? Well, fuck you. Do you want to bind the right shift key because you like to use the arrow keys and the default keyboard <laughs> binding was like uh, Z and X to go forwards and backwards and like S and C to turn? I don't know what the hell was going on. Uh, but clearly that wasn't um, thought out. Uh, and if you want to start the actual game on the native Linux version, fuck you. All you get is that red screen that uh, Ven was showing you earlier. Uh, the only way that you actually have to start the game is by using Proton. So I hit the Proton button and away we go. That Now, that doesn't help with the resolution or the right shift key, but at least the zoom level... Uh, the uh, when you go into the level selector, it doesn't zoom into the red underlayer. I'm guessing they didn't test it on Linux at all. Is it fun? No. Even if we were to ignore the fact that the Linux native version is completely unplayable, it is still not what I would consider fun. It's one saving grace is the atmosphere in some of the levels. There was a lot of work put into the aesthetics, and I did appreciate the desolate planet vibe and the creepy music from some of the maps. Unfortunately, this isn't a video, it's a video game. You can't get by on just aesthetics, and the actual game is frustrating. It's all about collecting stars as quickly as possible, but the terrain slows you down. Tree stumps, tree branches, a healthy dose of crap just strewn about. There's a stamina bar, like the, the nanny bar that Jordan mentioned. Different nanny that bar. That you need to both, yeah, uh, both sprint and jump, which means you're going to be spending a lot of time moving very, very slowly. But, you know what the biggest fuck you is? It takes longer for the actual game to start than for you to finish a level. I... Yeah. It needs more than nice makeup and sexy music to get my attention, and clearly, the Star Picker does not want my attention. And just, you know, to top off this particular shit cake, it creates a fucking folder in my home directory. One chair. Well, there you go. Um... Moral of the story, if you're going to sell your native Linux game, perhaps make sure that you can get into the game proper. I can totally see this being like, yeah, we tested this on Linux. It launched and we never looked any further than that. Mm. Yep. Yeah, it, it eventually That's loaded. Probably yeah. what they did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for shame. Indeed. All right. Well, coming up next, we get into a fist fight with Alex Trebek Woo. because zombie Alex Trebek. Trebek. <laughs> That's what wheelchairs. And if you were um, as disappointed as we were with that particular game, 
We feel you. Although we don't really. Okay. Care. Okay. Hear me <laughs> out though. Hear me, hear me out, <laughs> professor gloom. How the fuck else are we going to know? Isn't that like a little bit of a service? Hey, maybe I was thinking about buying this and playing it on Linux. Oh shit. It doesn't work. Three people tested it on three different systems. And they're like, no shit's broke. Yo basically yeah. confirmed that. Yeah. It, shit don't work. <laughs> And yeah, no, it is absolutely, if you find the um, game reviews useful, do let us know, or don't, we're, we're not your dads, uh, leave a YouTube or comment. moms for that matter. <laughs> you could just leave us a YouTube comment, if you're a Patreon, you can leave us a comment there too, or leave us you a can comment go to on Odyssey, or Library, those are fun to read. <laughs> no, I, good luck leave, with that. Leave, us, leave us a comment on vid.me, under... No. under I like the Odyssey ones because they're starting to get all creepy now. We've already, I, I've gotten the, uh, I like your voice. <laughs> I want to oh, wear so your we, skin. We've caught up to YouTube. Okay. Yeah, right. Right. They, uh, wait, wait. Are, are, are we getting feet? Are we getting feet requests though? Do no, we need to show feet? Not yet. Not yet. Listen, <laughs> we, we, we got to aim towards the goals, man. Yes. Linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button. There's a forum you can use to get in touch. Send some hate mail for their show. Send some feedback for the uh, Wednesday show. Ask Jordan for relationship advice. And if you are developing a game that does have a native Linux version, do let us know. Uh, just send us three keys or send us something that we can download and yeah. share. Otherwise, we're just going to make fun of you. You know what? And you this don't might, want that. <laughs> might be a good idea. Maybe get in touch with us before you publish your game. If you're not going to be asked to test it yourself, we can do it. Yeah. If you want someone to test your game for you, we're available for that too. Just send us some keys like, yo, can you guys like play right. this and let me know if it works? At, at, at works. the very least, we will <laughs> click play and we will also click new games so we can see if it actually works. <laughs> right. Yes, we will actually try to play the game. <laughs> right. So the one piece we got this week is from Linux Lover underscore 84. Absolutely not making that up. This is a real person. And uh, I, I wonder what year I was born. I had no idea, man. Uh, <laughs> Pedro being the retro hipster shill he is, decided to play some Alex Kid and Miracle DX or whatever the hell it was called. And... He, he was screaming around with it, playing it uh, in the pretty mode and kind of comparing it between that and the old school mode. Linux Lover 84 has this to say. Alex, oh, we had a debate, man. We, we did uh, kind of a conversation. Right at I, the start. Yeah, I, I tuned in. <laughs> I always like to pop in when people are streaming uh, and just be like, hey, moral support and making sure nothing's terribly fucked up. And let's think, man, the new animation with um, Alex. And I was like, he looks like budget Goku with his tail and his ears. I'm like, ha. Huh. So <laughs> this is the origin story of this, and uh, Alex lets us know that it was originally going to be a Dragon Ball Z, but then, if I recall correctly, the negotiations broke down. So you're not far off there. I don't think I noticed a tail in the earlier games, though. Did I don't think he had a tail, did he? Uh, he had in the little in-between level where ah. he was uh, eating the burger. There was a tail. Okay. But yeah, not, not in the actual game like there is now. Also... Pedro, um, were you using the <laughs> NVIDIA proprietary drivers? Proprietary. Yes, proprietary <laughs> yes I was. <laughs> maximum. Uh, why do you hate freedom, Pedro? Uh, I might have thrown that in. <laughs> Seems like there's some driver problems or lack of optimization if the GPU is taxing this so much. How do you respond to this, Pedro Mateus? Well, I was the one who actually pointed that out because... Playing in a new version at 2560 by 1440 with a game running at 144 hertz. Uh, it was Why using are you like running 65... Alex Kidd at that? <laughs> because I can. Uh, and it was using like 65% of the GPU, which is a GTX 1080. So it's like, okay, that's interesting. So I switched to the old mode and it dropped down to like 40 something percent. 45. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. So there's a significant uh, performance difference here. And um, to the point about it being a Dragon Ball game, yeah, uh, Foxy uh, actually pointed that out during the stream, too. And, uh, yeah, it was supposed to be a Dragon Ball game originally, but then they lost that particular license, so they just went with the Legend of the Monkey King mm. concept that was also behind Dragon Ball. So, yeah, the, the, it is technically Can't plagiarize a Dragon a Ball year old story. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 uh, 
What was so? What was it like? Uh, fifty fifty with DXVK at one forty four to uh, at one fourteen forty at one four. That, that seems about right, especially dealing with modern inefficiencies and in game engines. I'm guessing yeah, that was Unity. Modern, modern engines and with the amount of bloom and the amount of like depth of field and all the post processing that it's doing at twenty five sixty by fourteen forty one hundred and forty four mm-hmm. FPS. Okay. Yeah, no, it shocked me a little bit because it's like, oh, it's Alex Kidd. And Do you think it's FSR using would fix it? over half my GPU. No. <laughs> Here's a, I'm going to give you a friendly pro tip. If you see anybody streaming, playing modern game, um, commercial game, there's almost a 100% chance if they're using NVIDIA, it's the proprietary drivers. The new flow drivers are good for um, doing some unsupported cards, 2D ish stuff, as long as you don't mind your card running at full power constantly yeah Ask me on, no. also full fan speed but yeah also full power see i found a trick i got a passive in v300 <laughs> ah now wow. admittedly it doesn't even have a display hooked up to it but it's nice and toasty inside of jackbox just in case <laughs> all right uh that's it uh, we look forward to your conversation bits uh send us some messages let us know what's going on in your life give but us a shout until then we got to cue that music, baby. You can always get a hold of me. I'm just at Vin Stone on Twitter. I'm there. I'm posting stuff. Keep track. Um, try to get something up each and every day. You can holler at me. Scream at me. Say things to me in our Discord or IRC. or here on Twitch. Easy, easy, easy way to get a hold of me. And um, just going to be old man Vin at Vin on mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm Jordan Svung in Miracle World. You can find me on the Sega Genesis <laughs> or uh, Twitch, twitch.tv slash Burning Fool or follow me on Twitter at The Burning Fool. One day, Nick. One day. You're not in a any pig. case, you can find me at Unaccounted4 on Twitter. And that's F O U R because someone had already taken the number four. But yeah, that's the best place you can find me unless you play. Um, Soapbox Race World. That that seems to be the whenever I find it, like a couple of minutes to spend doing something, I log in and I go into the Night Rider server. So yeah, join me on there if you like that kind of game. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> get that game, Wreck Pedro. All right, we're, we're, it just yes. keeps coming back to Night Rider <laughs> every time. <laughs> what's what's going on with this? Elsa, Elsa and Sub-Zero are like twins. It's like a Luke Leia situation. Don't at me. Guess what? I also <laughs> forgot to do the shots again this week. So, ha, yeah. it's just me. Well, it's just well, fun. <laughs> well, then, fixing that, we got to thank our advisors, Omegas and our Theron and our executive producers, the lovely Aldeus. Our, are we pirates? Arr, Star Mission, Mr. Fox Dog, <laughs> Atomic Ass Mike G, Empty Drummer, Holy Toast and Kohaku, and our little Nikki fans, Darkwing and Abstraction, Yar! Wake up tomorrow morning and be like, why is my throat so. Oh, right, right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> With Jack B, Renault, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin Frostclaw, and Kyle Linux comprising the Sea Monsters, and Nova! Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marcin, about Doom D, Craig, Renee, DeCrasny, Kim, got Alan, Ashley, Mr. Lur- Chris, and Jill, Jill, and uh, Doom and 2.1, Ryan Steve D. B, and I'm Dirty I'm trying to get ones that do every week. <laughs> Cressley, Doja, Frizo, it's been a Let's while, see. Thomas Mentor. D, Monica, hey. Zen, <laughs> Zen, 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 and Oil of Hope. I got you Oily on the line. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Haha, life hack. <laughs> that way it's And Alex and Zen. Thank you very much, new Patreon. Zen. All right, beautiful people. Let, let's make our goodbye faces. You know I'm using that. I know you are. All right. What's a goodbye face? Five dudes. <laughs>